This video is a slight aside from the main focus of this chapter and looks at alternative ways of setting up an MPC and whether they can help with the feedforward design. Background then. So far in this chapter we've demonstrated that the default feedforward you get from algorithms like GPC and the same will apply for most predictive control algorithms. The default feedforward may be quite poor. And here's a typical feedforward that you might get out of a GPC algorithm. However, changing the amount of advanced knowledge available is a pragmatic and simple way of determining an effective feedforward. So in other words, you only allow yourself NA samples of future information about the target, where NA is less than NY, usually much less than NY. This video begins a brief discussion of whether there are other modifications to a basic GPC setup which are possible or useful. Now the reason why the feedforward is poorly defined in general is because the optimization is poorly defined and we've discussed that quite a lot. But just to remind you, the main issue is you cannot effectively track a target change at the nth sample using control moves at the nth sample if n and m are not close together. And so if you want a sensible optimization, you need to make sure that your degrees of freedom overlap with where you want all the key dynamics to happen. Now, for a well-defined optimization, therefore, the flexibility in the predicted control trajectory must be sufficient to closely match the desired closed loop trajectory. And if that's not the case, you won't get a sensible answer. Now, you might ask how this line of reasoning affects possible changes to GPC. So the previous video suggested we just reduce the amount of advanced knowledge available. And now we're going to see, are there some alternatives? So first then, concepts of blocking. And you'll see there's some literature about blocking, but not a lot. So one weakness of GPC, and in fact the same applies to dual mode algorithms, is that all the degrees of freedom are in the immediate transients of the predicted input trajectory. So your degrees of freedom are all now. You haven't got degrees of freedom in the long term. And this is obviously incompatible with change in, changes in the target, which are several samples into the future. So we can get around this by deliberately not looking at targets, which are too far ahead. So that's what we've proposed so far. But there may remain scenarios where you actually need or desire some flexibility in the input predictions many samples into the future. But at the same time, you don't want to use a very large NU. So how are you going to manage this? Such scenarios like this arise in particular when you have constraint problems, because the active constraints could be quite far into the future, even though your target changes and the like may be in the near horizon. So concepts of blocking. Blocking is an approach whereby the degrees of freedom within the predicted input trajectory are spread over the output horizon rather than being focused in the transients. So here's an example. We've got our degrees of freedom defined as this vector delta u future equals delta uk, delta uk plus 1, delta uk plus 2, and so on. Now what I can do is I can say I'm going to assume that delta uk plus 1 is naught. And for example, delta uk plus 3 is naught, and so on. And I'm only going to choose as my degrees of freedom the input change at sample k, the input change at sample k plus a, the input change at sample k plus b, and so on. Now, if I look at what this means in terms of an input trajectory, I can have an input change here, and then I go all the way along until I get to maybe sample a, and then I might have another input change, and then I go all the way along until maybe I get to sample B, and then I have another input change. So you see here, I've got delta U K plus B, and here I've got delta U K plus A, and all the samples in between, the delta U is zero. So essentially, with a few degrees of freedom, I've spread out my control moves over the horizon. And in principle, that's the sort of concept you'll see in the blocking literature. Now. Blocking is conceptually simple and might seem appealing, but there are some serious theoretical shortcomings. It's difficult to be systematic in selecting which control increments 
will be degrees of freedom. And this would be an even more complicated problem if you started looking at multivariable scenarios. The structure of the predictions also will not normally include the tail. Now, if you've forgotten what the tail is, you might want to go and look at video 4.6 where that's explained. And if you don't have the tail, it's difficult to make good arguments about the optimization being well posed and therefore getting consistent decision making from one sample to the next. And there really is literally just one or two papers in the literature which look at this in the concept of blocking and it's quite hard work to get a good solution. Okay, so there are several papers in general in blocking in the literature if people want to go and look at it, but it's really by only a restricted number of authors. And therefore, I'm not going to continue this line of thought in this video book because I think the jury is still out as to whether blocking is effective or not, certainly in tracking scenarios. What about orthonormal functions? There's been a bit more work looking at alternative ways of defining the input predictions. So rather than making your degrees of freedom the input increments, instead, let's look at combinations of different trajectories. So here's an example. You can see I've got a trajectory down here, this column. I've got a different trajectory, this column, and a different trajectory, this column. So I've got lots of different possible intra trajectories. And then I'm going to take a linear combination of these using this degree of freedom, theta. So theta is the linear combination of these different trajectories. The columns define the shapes of the allowable trajectories. And theta is the number of degrees of freedom. And the key thing is, because you've got trajectories, these could evolve over quite a long horizon. You'll see here I've got an horizon of n, which could be far larger than the number of degrees of freedom in theta. Now, generally, people have looked at using orthonormal functions to define these columns. So they've looked at things like Laguerre functions and Katz functions. And while those papers have shown some very clear benefits of doing this, the problem is none of the work has looked explicitly at the use of advanced knowledge within tracking. And so that's a bit of a gap in the literature. Um, and as a consequence, we're not going to pursue that for now either. So in summary, other parameterizations of the input are possible and do appear in a limited part of the literature, and they do allow some benefits to an MPC design. But as yet, none of these have really looked at the use of advanced knowledge. They've used the blocking of the orthonormal functions for other purposes. And so they haven't really looked at how will that impact on the choice of the feed forward. Therefore, the use of blocking and orthonormal functions are not considered further in this chapter, but they are indeed open questions, I think, in the literature for someone interested enough to pursue that.